Hey there, Sound of Peace. How's it going? Henry here. Today, let's go over thyroglossal duct cysts. So the two common neck cysts you usually see are thyroglossal and branchial cleft. Today, let's go over thyroglossal. Uh, the cause of a thyroglossal duct cyst is usually from incomplete atrophy of the thyroglossal duct tract. During typical embryological development, the thyroid gland develops in gestational week around three at the height of the foramen cecum and descends anterior to the hyoid bone coming to its final location in the anterior neck, just under the thyroid car cartilage, and anterior to the trachea. The thyroglossal duct typically atrophies by gestational week about 10. Failure of this duct to obliterate or involute is what causes the thyroglossal duct cyst to form and remain after birth. This is a congenital condition, so you're born with it. Uh, the diagnosis may be made at a later age. Uh, these things can get larger, they can become infected, and then can show up as a mass, which would then uh, require an ultrasound. If there's concern for a thyroglossal duct cyst or there's a neck mass that may resemble thyroglossal duct cyst, you'll perform a head and neck ultrasound soft tissue. Uh, I did a video of the protocol for that the other day. I'll link to that. The most common location is just above the thyroid, between the thyroid and the hyoid bone. Uh, but you can see a thyroglossal duct cyst uh, in the submental region. And in rare cases, you can see it lateral to the submen and the lateral sections of the submental region. Complications of a thyroglossal duct cyst are usually infection, and you could also have a recurrence after surgical resection. Infected thyroglossal duct cysts will have oftentimes internal debris and peripheral inflammatory changes of the surrounding soft tissues, so like fat stranding, free fluid, hyperemia. Here's a transverse view of the neck at level five. Beginning in the thyroid and angling up, you can see the thyroid there. In front of the thyroid, you can see the strap muscles and then angling superiorly there, that circular structure is a thyroglossal duct cyst. It is just right of midline. Now these cysts tend to fill up with mucus material. So you can see that one, this one's not anechoic. It has internal debris, internal echoes, but all the tissues around it appear normal. So this one's not infected. And here's the cyst in sagittal. You see this is just slightly inferior to the thyroid cartilage. Here's another case of a patient who presented with a mass in the submental region or section one of the neck. Um, you can see that there's internal debris there and as you move the transducer, you can see a sloshing around. The soft tissues around this hourglass shaped cystic uh, lesion were Slightly agrogenic, you can see some edema, so this, which are signs of inflammation or infection. Here is the same lesion in sagittal. You can see the inflammatory changes and the deeper parts of the cystic structure. There was some concern that this might be uh, some type of atypical branchial cleft cyst or perhaps a lymphatic malformation but it was confirmed by pathology to be a thyroglossal duct cyst that was infected. All right, hope you found this one useful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.